The ongoing discussion over space settlement has brought up issues such as whether or not humans should colonize other planets and whether doing so is feasible. This space ethics debate has the drawback of being readily overly generalized. We propose a framework to identify pertinent elements influencing the attractiveness criteria and feasibility limits of space settlement establishment in order to circumvent this issue. We concentrate on three variables, time frame, scale and settlement stage. We include mission cost, survivability, habitation, water, in situ resources for food, oxygen, fuel, energy, and dependence on Earth as key viability constraints for the framework. In the near to medium term, it will be challenging to create a permanent human settlement on Mars due to a number of soft feasibility restrictions rather than hard ones. But humanity has already accomplished things in the past that didn't seem possible. In order to warrant the expenses and exertion, the objective must possess great moral appeal. We go over five potential desirability variables that might be used to support the endeavor, but not all of these factors are required or sufficient to support this attempt because every framework has different feasibility restrictions. We conclude that there are insufficient normative grounds for constructing a permanent Mars settlement in the near future because we contend that certain of the desirable characteristics that are prominent in space ethical literature are not required nor sufficient in our framework. It is illogical to establish a permanent Mars settlement anytime soon. The greatest justification for doing it is also the weakest and not in a positive sense. While Earth is engulfed in ever deeper conflicts, fantasizing about relocating to Mars could offer a welcome diversion from our daily struggles. It makes perfect sense to cling to hopes of a better life in a distant location. But the picture gets less rosy when fantasies and the Martian dreams in particular come true. What possible hope might a hostile, desolate planet like Mars offer because we already live in a paradise when it comes to the solar system. Mars is on the menu though. Flags will be planted on Martian soil in the upcoming decades as part of NASA anticipated Artemis expedition. India intends to send another orbiter to Mars in 2024, while China plans to send a sample return mission there. Elon Musk, the most recent space billionaire on Earth, has made jokes about living out his final years on Mars seemingly with the intention of transforming mankind into a multiplanetary species. The most ambitious ideas for Mars, which are on the verge of being realistic, involve the permanent settlement of a million people on the planet. Like any operation involving the launch of humans into space, this one would be exceedingly costly and perilous. Some plans call for rockets carrying 150 passengers or 100 metric tons of goods to land directly on the Martian surface in order to accommodate large numbers of people living there permanently. In addition to the more than 50,000 food cargo flights, not to mention the transport flights for the machinery, components and other materials, reaching a million people on the Red Planet in a century would require about 7,000 passenger ship trips. This would only be possible during the launch window, which opens every two years. For the immigrants from Mars, life would still be extremely dangerous and constrained, even with this exorbitant expense. Thus, for this kind of large-scale settlement, you would require a very strong basis. After all, it's an ethical problem in addition to an engineering one. A number of justifications for space expansionism are covered in the quickly expanding body of literature on space ethics, including new scientific discoveries and knowledge, humanity's long-term survival, economic advantages, inspiration, and adventure. The question is, if these advantages worth the expenses, risks, and perils associated with constructing a long-term Martian settlement? To be honest, no. The lone shoe that fits is too little to warrant such an endeavor. 
even though the majority of them fail for various reasons. Researching Mars, important scientific findings, like the existence of life on Mars, may be unearthed. Science offers compelling justification for visiting Mars, albeit not for long-term habitation. For most scientific research, a modest outpost would be sufficient. Larger-scale settlement efforts also directly contradict certain scientific objectives. Large human populations have the potential to contaminate study objects and obstruct research through excavation and occupation. If one were to take the long-term survival of humanity at face value, this would seem to be a good reason to establish permanent communities on Mars. But in order to actually reduce the probability of extinction, a Mars settlement needs to be sufficiently self-sufficient. We might not have the time to wait, and it is unlikely that this will be accomplished very soon. Rather than constructing an off-world settlement, investments in global food security, comet or meteor deflection, pandemic preparedness, and world peace seem significantly more cost-effective. Furthermore, there's a chance that some hazards like rogue AI will follow us to Mars, so establishing a population there won't significantly reduce the overall danger of extinction. Therefore, although protecting mankind in the long run could be a good cause to settle elsewhere, it does not make the case for doing so urgently. Mars also looks to provide an alluring economic potential, although this could turn out to be untrue. Deep space operations and interplanetary travel are currently too costly. The majority of business chances are best taken advantage of nearer to home. For instance, mining the Moon or near-Earth asteroids is probably significantly more economical than mining Mars or the asteroid belt. I think the same may be said for space manufacturing or tourism. Furthermore, Mars's businesses might compromise scientific objectives. Science should come first and business later if we wish to gain from Mars scientific discoveries as well as its economic ones. It will be a turning point in human history if we are able to colonize Mars, our neighboring planet. It might end up having the same long-term effects as European society's colonization of other continents centuries ago. As a result, it ought to be viewed as a broad societal issue with several ethical, political and social dimensions rather than just a technical engineering one. When contemplating the future of space settlements, one must take into account a variety of factors, including practicality, long-term effects and moral desirability. We learn a great deal about our reliance on and adaptability to familiar terrestrial characteristics, such as the gravity and atmosphere of this planet, from our efforts to establish habitable conditions on Mars. We also rely on intricate ecosystems for a variety of ecosystem services, including pollinators, carbon cycles, food chains, and the breakdown of organic materials, all of which support our ability to produce food and support our ourselves. The industrial lifestyle is made possible by the natural resources found on Earth, and the diverse and expansive societies support the exchange economy, cultural practices, educational systems, and social welfare of their constituents. It is crucial to consider whether or whether these extensive, ecological, social, cultural, and economic networks can ever be extended to Mars as they are undoubtedly necessary for a happy life.